Hey everyone, I wanted to just leave some brief comments on discussion two. Um, I appreciate all of your hard work and your insights on a broad range of topics. Um, as is typically the case in this class, we have to condense um, essentially all of New Mexico's long history into a short 12-week term. Um, so we're always covering a bunch of stuff at the same time. Um, I'll get to some of the specific topics that we were talking about in just a second. Um, I want to remind you that you need to include at least two specific cited references to the readings or the films in each of your response posts on the discussion board. Um, so that means that overall you'll be including four, at least four, uh, references to the readings and the videos. Um, the reason for that, again, going all the way back to Unit 1, is that history needs to be rooted in evidence. Um, historical evidence comes from secondary primary sources. We're reading a lot of and viewing a lot of secondary sources in this class, um, but they need to stand as the evidence that supports and illustrates your ideas. Uh, another way to think about this is um, to go back and, and read your response and ask yourself if you have been showing um, or telling. So, so the, the convention here is to show, don't tell. So if you're just saying this is the way it was without any evidence, that's telling. Um, if you're providing specific evidence about Bent's Fort, for example, based on the film um, and some of the brief references in the e-text, um, and you cite those references in specific ways, then you are showing. Um, so be sure to show rather than tell. I don't want to spend too much time here talking about uh, the various topics that we were discussing. Um, and I'll finish providing feedback on all of your um, discussion posts here within the next uh, couple of hours. But I wanted to get this here because I know some of you are already starting uh, into Unit 5. So um, among the various topics that we were talking about uh, were, the, of course, the U.S.-Mexico War um, with all of the interconnected um, issues of New Mexico's period as part of Mexico, um, the Santa Fe trade, the war effort, New Mexico's resistance to the war, um, and then what lay in store after New Mexico had become a U.S. territory. We're thinking about that from the perspectives not only of Nuevo Mexicanos, uh, but also of Anglo newcomers and the indigenous peoples that had inhabited, <coughs> excuse me, that had inhabited New Mexico in the Southwest. Um, for thousands of years. So um, one thing that I want to propose here is for us to think about the multiple perspectives um, that were not necessarily shown to us um, in the materials that we used for the last couple of units. And if you'd like to earn uh, up to 25 points extra credit, um, you can reply to this video. I'm going to post it not only as an announcement, but also in the discussion thread as well. Um, you can reply to it um, with a short paragraph or two that includes specific um, references and citations for your ideas to show and not tell. Um, but what I want you to do is think about what are some perspectives that we didn't consider. And let me give you a couple of examples to help you as a jumping off point here if you want to do uh, this extra credit and think more about historical perspective. Um, many of us also talked about the Monument to Genocide video, about uh, the Juan de Oñate statues that were um, put up in um, Alcalde, New Mexico, and in El Paso um, in the late 1990s, early 2000s. Uh, we we're talking about some of the reasons that there was so much controversy, the different perspectives um, that were left out uh, by erecting those kinds of statues. Um, and some of us suggested that, and I think it's probably a pretty good suggestion, that maybe what was needed is a monument that is more attentive to the various viewpoints on the Spanish conquest of the Southwest. So not just looking at um, glorifying Oñate and other conquistadores, but also looking at what was the situation of the native people at that time, um, and how could we present that um, in a kind of public venue. But then something else to think about is, you know, even by um, you know, showing all of those various perspectives in a monument, 
I guess one way to think about it is how could we possibly capture all of those things in a single monument? And do you think that would solve the problem? Um, so this is one um, issue of perspective that you can write about if you want um, for extra credit. Also, thinking about Bent's Fort and Los Niños Héroes, um, those were two videos that we watched that were very inspiring to many of us, and I think for good reason. Um, I was able to drive past Bent's Fort recently on our trip out to Iowa uh, with my family, and that was uh, an interesting experience to drive along the old Santa Fe Trail um, and kind of imagine what it would have looked like before there was a paved road there um, and the recreation of Bent's Fort. Think about you know what, what would have happened there based on the film, based on the readings that we've done um, in the early 1800s. Um, I also was able to visit the monument to Los Niños Héroes in Mexico City a couple of summers ago, and that was truly a, a interesting experience, a very moving experience to be in another country and see a monument erected um, to the memory of, of these figures who have been mythologized um, as part of the national history of Mexico um, for a war that the United States perpetrated against Mexico. Um, so again, it was, a, as an American, a very interesting experience to see that monument and think about the history that it was commemorating. Um, but, as many of our comments have pointed out, the view that we got of Vents Fort, the view that we got of Los Niños Héroes, those were kind of um, very positive, very idealized visions of those two places and the events that um, were commemorated there or uh, by the, the Niños Héroes themselves. So, thinking about this again, I, I don't want to be the, the storm cloud over the past, but we do need to think about what other perspectives are there that we weren't getting, that we weren't thinking about. Um, so that's another tack you can take if you'd like to write about those kinds of perspectives um, for the extra credit here um, for the Unit 2 discussion. Or you can go off on your own direction, as long as you're offering a new perspective on something that we talked about in the last couple of units. Um, or it's extra credit, so you don't have to do it at all, but at least hopefully this is been somewhat thought-provoking in helping you think about um, you know, what is it that we're not getting from what we've been viewing, what we've been reading. Um, and as I pointed out in some of my feedback to you and your uh, on your discussion posts, um, particularly on the critique that I asked for in the bonus question of John Green's crash course episode on the U.S.-Mexico War, um, I don't think it's possible to capture every perspective um, in most histories because they would become kind of unwieldy, difficult to read. However, we can do our best to try to capture as many perspectives as possible. So the point then is that even with those that are doing the best, um, they still tend to leave out something. Um, not necessarily um, because they're meaning to or they're trying to slant the story in a certain way, but just because it's, it's um, difficult, if not impossible, to capture everything. Um, in a manageable, readable history. So those are the kinds of things I want you to think about as we continue to read and, and view the videos for this course, and those are the kinds of things you can write about here for extra credit. I will stop belaboring that point now. Um, please, as always, let me know if you have any questions as we move forward, especially regarding Storify or how to complete the final project, and I look forward to um, Unit 5 with all of you.